Hello, YouTube friends. Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And um, today's topic are the seven fish that I would suggest, the seven cichlids that I would recommend if you were getting into a tank in the 40 to 75 range. And uh, it's a question I get asked on a pretty regular basis. Hey, I'm about to I'm, I'm about to get into my first tank and uh, it, it, the size is 40 or it's 75, somewhere in there. And what fish can I put in there? Well, if I had to pick just seven to get you started, the, these would be the seven. And I'll add a couple extras at the end like I normally do. But th these would be the fish that could get you going. And uh, before we get into that, I'm going to show you something that Phil Griffiths did, Mr. Chips, over in Great Britain, over in the UK. He put something together for me, I think, because he heard I was going to the beach. And I want to share it with you. And, and uh, you tell me what you think. Thank you very much for that, Phil. I really appreciate it. Very nice job there. And um, that, of course, is the logo for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream, uh, which he's, he put on the on the shore for me. That live stream occurs on Saturdays between uh, usually at around 10 a.m. And uh, that's Pacific time here in Southern California. So when I, when I look this way, it means I'm looking at my control panel where I'm looking at the scenes and I'll be switching scenes and going back and forth. And uh, that's the way this is going to be operating today. And uh, I hope you don't find that too distracting, but I will try and have my attention on you and the camera. So the, um, if you like this kind of content, if you like information about fish, you like learning about, about fish the way I do, uh, certainly hit that sub button and it is very appreciated. Hit the bell so you get notifications. And uh, you know, we're always learning on this channel and I love always learning about fish. And if you do too, hit that sub button, my friend. So the first fish I'm gonna add uh, to the list of the seven fish that I would include in a 40 to 75 gallon tank is the um, that Benga Sunshine. That's a beautiful fish. And the one you see here, I picked up from Trevor O'Shea at the Wonder of Cichlids. Uh, beautiful fish. Uh, if you have a black background like I have in the 100 gallon, it really adds a lot of pop. Uh, you know, having that yellow in there adds a lot of pop to the tank. The blue on this fish, and of course, uh, Trevor provides you with very good specimens. Uh, this one, I believe, is an F1. And, uh, you know, that blue, that blue in the face contrasting with the yellow, it, it's just a beautiful uh, combination. So definitely a, a, a Benga Sunshine would be a, a fish I would add to that list for sure. Because they, um, uh, you know, if you have a dark background and the other cichlids tend to be more in the blues, the darker blues and the reds, the Benga Sunshine is really gonna, gonna stand out. It's gonna really pop. It's a fish that gets a lot of comments when people come around and take a look. Another fish that I would uh, that I would suggest that you have in a tank between 40 and 70 gallons would be a, a, a Bicolor 500. Called a 500 because it was 500, number 500 on the list of cichlids uh, from a list way back when uh, that classified them. And uh, the name stuck, Bicolor 500. Uh, the contrast of blue and green in the body, you know, that, that stripe behind the gills and uh, that that uh, that gorgeous uh, blue in the face, uh, just a, just a, a beautiful fish, and um, it, it's often compared to uh, another fish that's on the list, and uh, you can see him here. Um, you can see him here hanging out with some of the other fish here. This is the bicolor 500 hanging out with the electric, uh, with that uh, Benga sunshine, and a ruby red and a fluorescent. But uh, the, the Bicolor 500 is often compared to what is called a um, neon blue. A neon blue is one of my favorite uh, peacocks. And in some ways, I almost find it a, a bit even prettier than the Bicolor 500. And I never thought I'd say that. But just because of the, um, the, the pop in the color, the, um, the, um, the spots in the anal fin, uh, it's just a, a very gorgeous fish and some people suggest you don't keep them together because uh, they're so similar and you can see here um, the comparison I did a little comparison here of the two of them you can see that they are very close in markings and usually you don't want to have fish that are too close because they'll see each other as um, an adversary and so um, but I wouldn't you know, 
I, I went ahead and picked up that bicolor from uh, James Largo over at the Cichlid Shack. He, he provides great quality fish. The eye biter you see behind me is from him. And uh, at any rate, the uh, uh, I've kept them together. The bicolor is bigger than the neon. So maybe that's why the neon isn't fired up or going after them at all. Maybe it'll change over time. But for now, they're getting along fine. But I have those both in the 100 and two of my favorite fish. The pictures I'm showing you today are of fish that I either own right now or have owned. And so that's that's the, uh, the stock of photos that I'm pulling from. Another fish that I would very highly recommend and I just think is a gorgeous fish, again, in the peacock family here of African cichlids, is the uh, flavescent. Beautiful fish, uh, tends to change color depending on mood, can be a bit dark, uh, can go a bit green, can have uh, shades of green uh, in the body. Uh, just a beautiful fish, as you can see, blue in the face, like many cichlids. That white stripe that peacocks have on that dorsal fin, very, very pretty. If you can get a hold of a fluvescent, uh, definitely get a hold of one. Another fish, and uh, switching families of fish here, uh, getting into a jalo reef. And uh, when you look at the blue and the... Um, the blue and the greens and yellows in the body of a jalo reef in the Placidochromis family. Just a, a gorgeous fish. I've had a couple of them over the years and all the fish I'm covering with you for the most part are pretty docile. Uh, some of the protomelis, uh, like your Taiwan reef, your, your red empress, can become a little bit nippy but they don't get into that I've got to kill you type of uh, craziness that some cichlids get into. Uh, Jalo Reef tends to be on the docile side, uh, peaceful fish, and I really enjoyed uh, having them. I have one right now in the 100. The one you see in the picture is the one, the one I have currently in the 100. Beautiful fish and definitely on the list of top seven that you should have in your aquarium. Another one getting into the Protomelis family is your uh, red empress. Uh, red empress is protomelis. That means that you know they're going to need a little bit of veg you know, vegetables in the diet. I give the fish uh, spirulina uh, and there's some greens and some other food that I mix in, some pellets from uh, uh, that I give them that have some vegetables in them, but uh, they do need some veg. But um, some of these protomelis can be aggressive. I have a, a fire hap here and I have had um, instances where sometimes a, a Taiwan reef has become a bit, you know, chasing, a bit nippy. But for the most part, um, the red empresses that I've had have been very, you know, they kind of keep to themselves and uh, they don't really make much trouble. And again, you're in that five to seven inch uh, range when they do grow out on you. And one thing I like about uh, all the fish I've mentioned to you so far is that they, they keep their color, even if they're subdominant, uh, very often they'll, they'll stay pretty colored up in the tank. Unlike um, some of the, um, like this trout, beautiful trout I picked up also from Trevor O'Shea at the Wonder of Cichlids. Um, this trout colored down uh, dramatically. Uh, I also have a, um, I have a living stone, if I can get him to come over here. I have a living stone eye in here that also, uh, there's the trout. I have a living stone eye that lost all this color, a male that lost all this color when I moved them over here. Uh, they they, they want to go off the radar of the dominant fish. Hey, look, I might even be a female. Don't even look at me um, and certainly don't hurt me. Uh, the boss in this tank, of course, you see him coming up right now, is this guy, that giant of Venusus. Nobody messes with him. Some have challenged him, but he's always managed to stay the boss. And so, um, interestingly enough, the Fusco, which uh, is right here, not sure if you can see him, there he is, yeah. The Fusco has maintained his color. So some fish color down immediately when they get in any kind of a subdominant situation. Not the case uh, with, with these uh, peacocks. They tend to keep their color. And, um, I, I, and the red empresses I've had uh, tend to stay fairly colored up. Another fish that I love that, uh, uh, that I had for quite some time and is a beautiful fish is the ruby red. Uh, sometimes compared to the German red peacock, uh, but I like the ruby reds more because the color in the face is a bit more of a deeper, uh, deeper color, a deeper blue. And um, again, that stripe on the dorsal, just a beautiful specimen, a ruby red. If you can get a hold of one of those, 
Uh, again, they'll keep their they'll they'll keep their co their color. They don't really color down once they color up. At least that's been my experience. And uh, just gorgeous fish, pretty pretty much on the peaceful dorsal side. Uh, like any fish, especially if you have females in the tank, they can get fired up. But for the most part, uh, you're going to find that uh, a ruby red is going to be uh, pretty mellow. Another fish jumping back over to the Protomelis family that has been a favorite of mine over the years is the Taiwan Reef. Uh, that is what I have in the uh, logo of the channel is a young Taiwan Reef that I grew out. Uh, this is that same Taiwan Reef after he put on color and size. And you can see just a beautiful fish uh, with that contrasting color in the, um, in the anal fin, uh, the beautiful white uh, two-tone dorsal, and that beautiful blue uh, that, that, that sort of blends into an orangey-yellow belly. Just a gorgeous fish. Taiwan Reef, if you can get a hold of one, um, a young male, grow it out. Uh, they will not disappoint. And they do put on some size. They can get six, seven inches. They can get a little thick. And uh, but I haven't found them to be too crazy, uh, not like the fire hap that I have back here. I have a fire hap in this tank, and he's like you know just apeshit crazy. And uh, uh, but at any rate, the Taiwan reefs, like the uh, red empresses, tend to stay a little bit. At least from my experience, maybe you've had a different experience. Certainly share it below. But they tend to be a bit on the docile or the peaceful side. So um, that that makes up the list of seven, the seven fish that you can see here are the ones that I would uh, that would include. Let me actually bring the right slide up here. These are the seven the seven that I would include. And uh, just to sort of recap, right, the uh, uh, the Sunshine Benga, the Flavescent, the Bicolor 500, the Jalo Reef, the uh, Red Empress, the Ruby Red, and the Taiwan Reef. Write those down if you're starting off a tank. Uh, buy your peacocks first. This is a, a tip for you, a pro tip. Buy your peacocks first and, uh, and then let them grow out, put on some size and get comfortable in the tank and then add the protomelis. The protomelis will grow pretty quickly and, uh, but uh, once you've established that pecking order and the peacocks feel pretty confident, I think you'll have a better go of it, okay? So um, be sure if you like uh, this kind of content and you like information about uh, keeping fish and uh, certainly cichlids and fish in general and the care of fish, uh, definitely hit that bell, uh, you know, and uh, hit that sub button if you haven't already. I know a lot of you have, and uh, I really appreciate it. And join me on Saturday for the cichlids and coffee live stream. Not sure if I'll be doing doing one this weekend because I'll be at the beach. But uh, thank you so much for tuning in. You are appreciated. The channel continues to grow. The live streams continue to become more popular. And that's because of you. You rock. Your support is greatly appreciated. And that's it for me. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll see you at the next video.